Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor today. I'm very excited because we have a very, very, very special guest today, and her name is Dr. Amanda. She specializes in the law of attraction. She is an author, and she has her own podcast, and she is here today to explain some of the things that have to do with the law of attraction, what it is how it can affect your life, and how it can elevate you to new levels in your life. So I'm really excited to have her on the show. Dr. Amanda, I am very honored that you took the time to come on the show today. Can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Stacey. You know, I always like to start for people else getting engaged first before I even say anything about myself. So, you know, first think about how you woke up this morning. How did you feel when you woke up? If you just had to like label it with, was I stressed out? And my first thought was like, oh my God, I have so much stuff to do today. Or were you like, yeah, I can't wait to get out of bed. I'm inspired. I feel alive. Where are you on that spectrum? You know, just decide for yourself, how did I feel this morning? And I like to ask that because the way that you start your day is going to spiral either up or down based on your energy and your state of being. And all of our reality is created from our state of being. So if you wake up feeling stressed, but every day you keep thinking, I want a life of freedom, it's an impossibility to get that if you wake up feeling stressed every day, because those two things do not equate. However, yeah. you're feeling in the moment are going to be how you feel in the future. So, you know, I like to really play with this with people because, you know, my journey started with some really hard stuff. And I think that most people, when they go through, let's say like the hero or the heroine's journey, they start at a breakdown point. And mine definitely started that way. I became an entrepreneur and a coach when in this moment, when I was on the floor crying one night and I had left my 15 year marriage, having an affair and my next relationship wasn't working. So here I am on the floor. My boyfriend had moved out, moved all of his stuff. And I was sitting on the basement floor, looking at this empty basement, crying and I had spent the whole day on Craigslist at the time, you know, that was where we looked for rentals. I couldn't afford anything for me and my three kids. And right. I was already on food stamps and I was just sitting there feeling really sorry for myself and really scared. And I thought, no one's coming to save me. Like no one is going to come save me. And whose fault is this? I was kind of scanning my history, looking for who to blame and who to help me. And nothing came up. And other than the thought that, when I was scanning my history, I realized I'm the center of every part of my life. It's me. I am the problem. I need to change. And yeah. so, you know, in that moment, I thought I'm willing to do whatever it takes to have better relationships and make more money because I was tired of feeling poor and I was tired of these relationships going, just having a really hard time in relationships. And it led me to listening to podcasts because I was already really busy and, you know, I was in grad school, had three kids, single mom. And so I was listening to podcasts all the time. Like when I was taking my kids to school and washing the dishes and walking between classes and I've started to change. I started to hear things where I'm like, whoa, I've never been taught this stuff before. Why are we not teaching this in school? Why don't people understand what energy is, how to love yourself more, how to have better relationships, how to make money, how to feel good. And so as I started listening to those in the way that the law of attraction works, you know, I go like, oh, everything works out perfectly. While this was going on for me personally in my graduate school program, our department had this national news fallout where professors were leaving the department and they were super stressed. My friends were stressed. Everyone in the program was stressed. And I thought, Ooh, I don't want to be a professor. That's what I thought I was on track for. And so I decided, well, those people that are doing the podcast are like coach type people. Maybe I'll become a coach. And so I decided to finish my degree and become a coach. And so I, in that first year, you know, I took the leap into business and I went from food stamps to six figures. And then it's just been this evolutionary path since then, learning how to really help people feel good love themselves and build businesses that they love that are this, that, you know, I have uh, spiral tattoos and spirals everywhere because I think about how we grow in a spiral formation where we have to go through the hard parts to get to the next evolution of ourselves. Yeah. And so I love to help people evolve and, and get better and feel better. And business is one of those methods that we can use to be really free. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. I love that. 
Now, for people who don't understand the law of attraction, like a lot of people do understand what law of attraction is, but there are some people out there that have heard the concept, but don't get the concept. You know, um, can you explain it to those people? Because a lot of people are interested in the law of attraction, but they don't know it exactly, like all the details and what it entails and how it could actually benefit your life. Can you dive deeper into it? Yeah, definitely. Um, in my book, I give a great outline. If they just go to I am a money magnet book.com, I am a money magnet book.com. Awesome entry into the book to help you learn about magnetism. And really, this works for anything because it's based on the law of attraction. So I give a good description there. What it is, and and most people get this wrong because uh, you know, let's say you think I have this conscious thought that I want something, and I just sit and focus on it. Why isn't it coming to me? And then they think the law of attraction doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason for that is because law of attraction is a blend of both manifestation and magnetism. Manifestation just means that you have a thought that you decide you want something. So you're having a conscious thought, and really to manifest something, all it really means is you're accomplishing a goal, basically, right? You're deciding you want something and you're having it come to you. I always use the example that I love to have tea in the morning, and I manifested a wonderful husband to make it for me every single day. <laughs> and so there you go. That's manifestation, right? It's that simple. That's a mix between your conscious thought of what you want and deciding you want something. And then your magnetism is why most people don't get what they want because yeah. your predominant feelings that you have and the beliefs that you have, that's the signal you're sending out into the universe. So the law of attraction is based on quantum physics, how we're all made of energy. And if you think about quantum physics and think about how we live in a field of energy, I kind of like to think of it like the way my mind visualizes it is it's like a big lake and we're putting energy into it and we're getting back exactly the energy we're putting into the lake. <laughs> and so, the, you know, it's this field and whatever you're thinking and feeling either consciously or unconsciously is what you're putting into the field. And, you know, for everyone listening or watching, you want to be thinking about there's only 5% of you that's conscious, 5%, 95% of you is run by your subconscious. So if 95% yes. of you is having doubts or you're stressed out and you're overwhelmed, or you feel fear or imposter syndrome, or you're beating yourself up, and you say you want something that 95% of you that is combating, I call it competing commitments, where it's competing against yourself, basically, that's yeah. what's getting put into the quantum field. That's why you're not attracting the thing that you think you want or the thing you say you want consciously. So, right. you know, for everyone here, you want to be thinking law of attraction is a mixture of what I want consciously and how I feel. And your feelings are always going to tell you. And that's why I asked at the beginning, how did you feel this morning when you woke up? Right. If you don't feel good, then you're attracting more and more of what you're feeling. If you feel amazing joy and inspiration, you're going to keep attracting a life where you get to be on that upward spiral growth curve and just expand into more and more opportunities and more and more joy and inspiration. I love it. I love it. Now, for people that want to be successful and they want to do really well in life and they're sick of just like, you know, skidding by week by week and they really, they are ready for a change. They feel it in their heart. They know they want to elevate to the next level. How does the law of attraction play in business? Like what type of mindset should you have? What start type of things should we start doing in order to bring the law of attraction into play and actually elevate to a new level, just like you elevated to a new level using the law of attraction? You know, I'll give you some really simple principles for people to think about. The one that I use a lot, especially for high power, you know, high achieving people, which I'm sure your audience is that because they're mm -hmm. here listening and proving themselves, right? So right. people tend to overthink and they tend to put too much on their plate. They tend to think they need to do it all and they beat themselves up when they don't. And so mm -hmm. one of my main principles that I teach business owners is narrow your focus to expand your freedom. So you've got to actually narrow what you're doing and take things off of your plate in order to declutter your energy because scattered energy leads to scattered results. So what most people do is they keep adding more. They think they need to do more. And this stress, what it does is sends out a signal to the universe that says, my plate is full. I'm maxed out. Don't bring me any opportunities because there's too much. Like I, I like to think about 
imagine you're in the woods and a lion's chasing you and you're stressed out, that level of stress is not a good time to be creative or have new opportunities come your way. It's a time to go on lockdown safety protection, right? And survival. So yes. what we're doing when we're at a low level of constant stress is telling the universe, don't bring me anything. I have too much going on already. And that's yeah. a, the state that a lot of business owners are in or, you know, let's even say C-suite or just anyone in the, moms, even stay at home moms, stay at home dads. We live with a lot of stress. And so de-stressing yourself is really important. And the ways to start practically doing that is to reprogram yourself because we are habitual beings. And the reason that we're getting the same outcomes over and over is because we're in a habit of getting the same outcomes over and over. So I teach people my three-step strategy, which is called my inner power formula. You've got to recognize reframe and repeat the reframes to reprogram. So first yeah. the recognition in this case would be, I feel stressed out. I, I most of the time feel stressed out or overwhelmed. Okay. So a reframe here, what am I going to do to take some things off my plate? What mm -hmm. am I going to do to do something today that brings me joy? And you start doing that on repeat. I, I use Afro mantras. I use meditation. I use journaling. I use a lot of different things. I, I program people in my, you know, the things that I offer to the world because yeah. it takes repetition. So right. those reframes, pretend you're going to the gym and all of a sudden you go, I want to have an amazing body that's fit and healthy. You wouldn't go to the gym once a month and think that you're going to get that outcome. You've got to go daily, right? You've got to go at least several times a week. You yes. brush your teeth every single day thinking I want healthy teeth. I brush my teeth every day. So we've got to do the same exact thing with our mindset and our state of being. We've got to program it for success. So yes. this is why most people struggle is because they're not willing to put in the reps and their mental gym. And that's what it takes to use the law of attraction to your benefit. You've got to program yourself to be different. You've got to reframe your energy so that you can get a different result. And so that I, I think that's the hardest part that people struggle with is that repetition piece. They give up too soon and they, they, it's like, we all, of course, we all want an amazing life. If I asked everyone here to raise their hand, if they want to be financially free and have an amazing life, a hundred percent of people say that that's what they want. Why don't a hundred percent of people get it? Because they yeah. don't, either they don't know the path or when they see the path, they're not willing to take the action steps necessary to get there. Right. It's so true. It's so true. Now for, for mindset, is there a specific mindset that people need to start doing? Like, you know, is there a certain way they have to start like behaving certain, um, certain type of lifestyle they need to really set up for themselves because we all have different lifestyles and we all have bad habits here and there, but you know, is there a specific lifestyle? Like do they have to start setting up their life a specific way if they really want the law of attraction to work for them? Ooh, so many things to say here. <laughs> okay, so, so first, notice you said, do they have to do a certain lifestyle? Anytime we feel have to, it, it creates resistance. So nice. if we, it's why we don't like to go to the gym or, or do daily mindset work because we're like, oh, I have to do this. Right. So mm -hmm. first you want to do things that are inspiring to you. If you right. do things that bring you joy, you're going to want to do more of them. This increases your magnetism to have fun opportunities come your way because you're in a state of joy instead of a state of resistance. And when yes. we force ourselves to do things, even when you hear the words have to force, I should right there, you've already created resistance and resistance is the number one reason we don't manifest what we want. So, right. so we, but first we want to start paying attention to what we feel like we have to do versus what we want to do, what we right. desire to do. So start there. And then, yeah, you know, it's, it's what I would say is it's a choice. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, yeah, I, I feel that feeling like I want more And by my life, be more successful, have more money, enjoy my day more, have better relationships. It's a choice. It starts with choice. So yes. in three steps to manifesting, this is my formula. Number one, you've got to decide with clarity and certainty what you want. Number two, take steps in the direction of what you want. And then number three, let the universe bring opportunities your way or just let opportunities come your way. And it's amazing how simple that sounds. 
a lot of people don't even start with step number one in a way that makes sense because they don't allow themselves to want what they want. Instead, they tell themselves they should want something, they settle, then they beat themselves up. Or sometimes in the past, they wanted something really big and they didn't get it. So now they're like, well, I can't have what I want. And so there's already so much mental chatter and resistance in step number one. Yeah, I, I like to remind people when you know what you want, and it's aligned with what you believe is possible, you will automatically take action. So action is evidence of belief. So mm -hmm. I can always know when someone comes to me and says, I need help, I'm procrastinating. I already know when they say that they're procrastinating, that they have a stuckness, either not knowing what they want or not believing it's possible because we always will take action on what we believe to be true. Right. And so if you're procrastinating, it just means that you've got to clear out the disbelief, the limited thinking, the small thinking and get a plan. You don't even necessarily need a plan in place because you'll take a step and the next step will appear. Rumi says, as you take a step on the way, the way appears. I love this quote. Right. And that's really how the law of attraction works. You don't right. need to know step A to Z to be successful. You just need to know as step A to B and take that. And then the next step will appear. It's exactly what I did when I went from food stamps to six figures. And, you know, now my life just keeps expanding. I go like, okay, the next goal is seven figures or whatever figure feels aligned at the time for me and yeah. I'm good in my life. And so that's what we all want, right? We think we want things that are going to make us happy when in reality, we must first focus on fixing ourselves and then the outer world will match. So your outer world's a reflection of your inner world. If you don't like what you're getting on the outside, change what's within. So changing yeah. what's within means start your day. You, you know, you ask like, is, are there things we have, we have to do what I would say, choose to optimize yourself first thing every single day. So if you notice you wake up in the morning stressed out, go, okay, what can I do right now to relax? This can be as simple as three deep breaths that mm -hmm. I teach people a three deep breath strategy, three deep breaths, take three deep breaths, say something nice to yourself, say something intentional about your day and then, and then go on with your day. When you recognize in the day at lunch that you feel stressed again, take the three deep breaths again, keep repeating that. And you'll notice that you'll start changing your state of being. You'll start desiring to feel good more frequently. And then yeah. that'll attract better things to your life. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I agree totally with you. Now, it, it, when, when people start, you know, when do you start thinking people start to really feel the change now when, when people start to like, you know, start to change their lives and, you mm -hmm. know, they're starting to want better things and they're starting to do things differently, you know, um, what is the process, you know, do people, cause a lot, we have, we come from a society that wants results real quick and it's not always mm -hmm. like that. You know, it, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes, you know, so what's the reality when you start applying the law of attraction to your life? You know, does it take time to see those results? Do you start, you know, seeing little tweaks in your life or, you know, can it happen and just have a snowball effect? Like, what are some of the things that you see, you know, when people start applying the law of attraction into their life and they start changing their life and really having a different outlook and, and thinking differently? Oh, so you ask such good questions. This is great. Okay. So <laughs> it, you're so right. We, it's like a, the microwave mentality where we're like, we want instant gratification. And if it doesn't happen fast, we give up. Right. So that is not how it works. Here's the example I like to give because it's such a good visual. Imagine that you are right now, your life is a, a is a freight train. And on that freight train, there you are. And then every car is filled up with your thoughts, your beliefs, your history, all the momentum you've built in a certain direction. Yeah. So now say you decide, I want to change. Now, in order to change and get different results, you've got to slow down that freight train, jump off and get on another one and build momentum for it to start going fast in a new direction, filling yeah. up all the cars with new thoughts, beliefs, feelings, decisions, actions. And that's why change doesn't happen quickly because the law of attraction is based around momentum and repetitive subconscious programming. So because we're habitual beings and we tend to, we have 60,000 thoughts a day, 90% of them are the same as yesterday and up to 85% of them are negative. So in that, that's a 
pattern. That's a habit. That's a way that we think that's stored in our subconscious mind. So when we decide to change, we've got to be conscious to shift in a new direction. And it takes time to build momentum in that new direction. And so that's why, you know, everything I teach people, repetition, 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 because you can't get a new result without repetition because you have to reprogram your subconscious mind to make that freight train go in a new direction. So I'll say this, change can happen pretty quickly though. It's not like, let's say you've spent 45, 50 years building your train in a direction. It doesn't say take 50 years to get the new train going in a new direction. So don't worry (laughs) about that. It can be, you have a thought that can change you right then. Now you've got to start building momentum to have the outer world match that new thought. And that's why sometimes this is really interesting when this happens. I tell a lot of people, especially when I'm working one-on-one with people, I say at first, it might look like life is getting worse when we start doing this work, because what you've built up so much around this way of thinking being, and when you start to change, you still have all that energy from the past that you've put into the quantum field and you still have a lot of outer world material results that are matching your old way of being so when you start to change some of that is still there and it's it takes time for it to fall away to get the new you that starts to attract new things so you know i mean if you look at like my history when i realized when I was on the floor crying to then having a six figure business, it happened pretty fast can, you know, it wasn't overnight, but, and I was dedicated, you know, when I made that committed decision on the floor, when I was crying, I was like, I am willing to do whatever it takes. I'm tired of this reality. That's why a lot of times you notice people have those big changes when they've really hit a very hard bottom. They, because they're serious and their decision is very clear to change. That's why that ha- can happen that way. So, you know, for people wanting to change, get clear, get really clear, commit and recommit daily, take daily strategic action. And that way you're signaling to the universe, Hey, I'm serious about this. I really want this and I'm really going to take action. And and you take those actions and then opportunities will start to show up that you could never plan for. You know, I like to ask, I'm sure for you, Stacey, because you've accomplished so much in life and you've helped so many people. Like if I asked you if, you know, when you set out on a goal 10 years ago, the way that you manifested it, did it happen the way you thought it would? Oh, definitely not. Actually, everything happened completely different than I anticipated. Yeah, exactly. and, And it took time and it was like, you know, what I thought was going to happen then did not happen at all. And it was like, it just took me on a journey and I kind of just went with the journey. And then all of a sudden it was like, something told me, okay, you're, you're not doing it the right way. You're finished. This, this part is done. Now you need to do it like this. And I just went with my intuition and my inner instinct and I followed and then boom, all of a sudden things just started happening out of the blue. But I just, I just listened to my inner instincts and I just, you know, kept going and positivity was key for me. Just trying to always be positive. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's exactly the path, right? So you decided that you wanted something, you took action in the direction and then the universe brought you opportunities that you didn't plan for. And right. it looked like the the initial quest is still the vision that you have unfolding in your outer reality. You know, that quest to help people, the quest to make differences in people's lives. And it just keeps expanding and in ways that you just would never plan for when you started the journey. And that's exactly how it works. And so, you know, I like to remind people to let go of clinging to the way you think it has to be because that clinging causes resistance. Yeah, I, I promise people and you and everyone listening, like the universe has bigger, better ideas than you do, you know, right. and whatever the universe means to you, we could talk. I like to think of universe as like cosmic intelligence. Yeah. Uh, I, I think of God as grand organized design. Mm-hmm. It's like it's energy. The universe is infinite intelligence, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just energy matching energy. And so when you collect your energy in a direction, the fulfillment the like the outer world fulfillment of the desire you have might look different, but it matches the the frequency of the desire. Right. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it definitely makes yeah. sense. Definitely makes sense. I really think it's, you know, people have to like I love what you say is like, you know, people people anticipate things to happen the way they want and you know, the way they ha- have it implanted in their brain. And they get so stuck on it is that they keep 
focus in on it. And, you know, the universe is trying to take them on a different path, but they're so stuck in these old ways that they kept doing things and that they're not really listening to what the universe is telling them. And it's like, you yeah. know, with the law of attraction, you know, what do you do in that sense? Like when you are so stuck, you have a lot of people that just, you know, they have done things a certain way for so long and the universe is saying, Hey, you're done now. You have to really start thinking about doing it this way. We're going yeah. to the right and you're still going straight. Come on, you know, and, it, and it's telling them to come, you know? So it's like, how do you get people to like really realize you know, and be open-minded with the law of attraction to really, you know, connect with their law of attraction. So they realize that the universe is saying, make a right dude, you know, and you're not going straight. You know what I mean? You're missing the turn. If you go straight, you know, <laughs> how do you use the law of attraction in that sense to really be in key with what the universe is saying and what your inner instincts, your, your intuition is telling you as well. Yeah, you're, you're so right. This is happens. I had a client who once told me, you know, if you don't listen, the universe, it, it's like getting hit by a two by four from the universe. <laughs> we don't want that because what it, like you can choose consciously to let go of your old ways of being, or you can have, or the universe will come along and help you by cancer affairs, sickness, accidents, because it's waking you up to your higher yeah. callings and your higher version of yourself. So it, so that you don't have those things happen. I, I tell people often, like, I feel like my life used to be, I didn't ask if I could swear. I don't swear a lot, but like, is it okay to swear on your show? <laughs> yeah, <I swear>. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's like, I used to always say like, my life felt like a shit show or like there was a shit storm coming at me all the time. And it right. felt out of, out of control. Like I was a victim and everything felt like it was falling apart and messy and dramatic. And as I learned how to apply the law of attraction, it's like, oh, I can choose my challenges. I can choose what I want. So I would say, you know, when you were saying that uh, an affirm mantra that I like to teach people, I, I teach starter statements because most people do affirmations wrong and they right. create resistance when they use them. Yeah. So I teach people ways to use them that work. So in this case that you're giving this example, one statement that people can say to themselves, first, it's going to come choice. They can yeah. keep doing the same things they've been doing and keep getting the same results, or they can decide I'm ready to get different results. So using the term, I am ready is really powerful. I am ready to get different results. I am willing to let go of my old ways of being. So those yeah. two statements, I am ready and I am willing are really powerful ways to reprogram your mind. So let's say you're, you're in the habit of being in control and clinging tightly. You could just say to yourself over and over, I am willing to let go of control. I'm willing to let myself change. I'm willing and ready to allow changes to happen. I am yeah. ready to release my past BS that I've been holding on to. Things like that, right? And you just yeah. start releasing the grip on the resistance so that you can start to move in a new direction. Because the reason that we do that, that we cling to the past is because it's safe and secure. Right. We, we know what to expect. So even if consciously you think you want something different, our survival mechanism kicks in and it's like, but wait, I, I call it the, it's like the inner critic leash. You start yeah. wanting something new, but your inner critic is there to protect you and keep you safe because in that small box, it knows what to expect. And right. so when you start to change, you've got to actually got to be willing to get uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to change. Change isn't oh. You know, sometimes we think, yeah, like success, we're like, it's a straight line curve. I decide I want something and I go, go, go. And it's awesome. No, <laughs> it's the spiral, right? Like you've got to go yeah. through the down part and, and that can be scary. It can be a scary feeling to change. And so, so you want to start releasing that and letting go of the clinging to the past and be willing, like I'm willing to change. I'm willing to go through the spiral to let myself evolve to the next version of myself. Yeah. It, it's a, it is a choice. It's, it's you being conscious and choosing that you're ready to expand into the newer, more empowered, more prosperous, more aligned, more successful version of yourself. Oh, I agree. And what I've noticed too, is that, you know, and I see so many of my clients do it is that the past is the past. We can't change the past, but people focus on the past and it causes them depression. Now, mm -hmm. then you have the warriors who are consistently worrying about the future that they're powerless over. We don't have control over our future. We don't know what's going to happen, but yet you have so many people worrying about the future. They're looking at their present and instead of focusing on the present, they're thinking about 
they're start creating a story in their head about oh if this happens then this is going to happen they it's like it's like they could be an author and just have you know do storytelling in their brain <laughs> and have all these unsettling emotions that haven't even come yet or may not even come into their lives instead of just focusing on the present living in the now really paying attention to what the universe is telling them what their intuition is telling them what their those thoughts that come into their head they're coming from the universe they're coming from your intuition you know your body and your your the universe knows what you need and it's trying to gear you in the right direction but if you're focusing on the past and you're you're in this stuck mode and this depression mode because you, you can't change it so why focus on it you know you could learn from yeah. it you know, just take what you learn and use it in the present but then you can't also worry about the future because you don't know what the future has in store but I think you could focus on the present, really be in tune with the universe, really be in tune with what your intuition is telling you, and then going with what the universe is telling you, and then creating a, a strong plan to kind of move you along the cycle so you get that snowball effect. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. You're going to love this. One of my favorite after mantras that I teach people is I let go of past regret and future fear to step into the power of presence. Oh, I love that. I love exactly that. Exactly what you're talking about. And you're so right. And what's so cool about what you said is that it's important to point out you manifest from the present moment. It's impossible to change the past. We can't. Right. If anyone here can change the past, please come to me. Let's create a multi-billion yes. dollar business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, hey, that'd be cool. I'd but like to partner. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, and so you can't change the past. And truthfully, why would you want to unless you don't like who you are today? Because yes. your past got you where you are today. So for me, yes. I've had a lot. Lots of hard things happened in my past. I wouldn't take back one single one of them because I like who I am today. I like my life today. So if you're fighting against the past, it means that you're not okay in the present. And yes. if you're in the future, so my, I love acronyms because it helps people. It's easy to remember. So my acronym yeah. for fear is the future expectation of awful results. The future <laughs> expectation of awful results. So it's just like you're saying, you're projecting into the future worry and and doubt and things that haven't happened that are bad. So you're actually, you know, the way to predict the future is by recognizing whether you're in fear right now. If you're in fear right now, whatever you're fearing and worrying about, you are paving the way to come to you in the future. Yeah. So if you want to be powerful and you want to be a deliberate creator consciously of your future reality change how you are right now, be present. And, yes. and that is, I mean, Stacy, this is a lifelong quest, right? Like yeah. to be present is so challenging for people. Oh, it's yeah. wild how challenging it is for us to be present because our mind, especially smart people like to solve puzzles and we yeah. create puzzles for ourselves. Um, Mickey Singer, the guy, Michael Singer, who wrote Untethered Soul, he, one of my favorite quotes of his is, the mind is a place the soul goes to hide from the heart. Mm, I, I love, love that. that so much because really what's going on with most of us is that we have a lot of feelings and we mm -hmm. use avoidance strategies. One of them being to overthink, to protect ourselves from how we feel. Yeah. And remember, I said, our feelings are what attract to us magnetically. So if you're avoiding a feeling, you, it's not going to go away. What you avoid right. persists and grows in size, right? That's what Carl Jung yeah. says. So what you avoid is actually growing. So if you're in a state of fear or regret or resentment or blame, and you're building those things up in your being, that's the future that you're going to get with certainty. Right. Now for the people who want to let go, like what's your, what's your intake on letting go? Cause that's hard for a lot of people, you know? Oh, yeah. You could forgive people for, for things they've done. You could forgive things that happened to you. And you could say, I forgive this because of X, Y, and Z. And I understand X, Y, and Z. And you don't have to hear a person say, I'm sorry, or you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go through life. But if you, if you are in a, in a position where things have happened to you or, or one bad thing has happened after one, you know, one obstacle after another obstacle, after another obstacle, and you're starting to get frustrated and it's like you start to grow resentment and anger. And then sometimes a lot of people will blame people for what's been happening, mm -hmm. you know? So how do you let go? What's your intake on letting go and not letting those resentments or the, that those negative emotions take control of you and bring you to a present that, you know, into a future that you don't want for yourself? 
Yeah. Wow. It, it, you know, I'll say this, the first most important thing when you're in that state is to recognize you're the creator of your reality. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, there's nothing to forgive if you recognize that everything is neutral and it's just your perception that makes it not so. So yes. there are benefits and drawbacks to everything that happens to us, even really hard things that we think are bad. There's a flip side of the bad that taught you lessons that helped you grow and you created that reality. So in a law of attraction way, you create everything that happens to you. So there's this mirror principle. All you need to do to know your inner thoughts is look at what's happening in your outer world. Yeah. That in a tangible form. So if you're attracting toxic relationships, there's something in you that needs to be healed in that way. And you mm -hmm. keep repeating the lessons you haven't learned. So mm -hmm. you're going to keep attracting the same things over and over again until you learn the lesson. And then you'll notice you attract something different. You asked something quite a while back and I don't think I totally answered it, uh, but it's, it's related to this. You'll know you've changed when you start attracting different things. Yes. All of a sudden you'll go, oh, I've reprogrammed my subconscious mind because I'm not attracting the same things anymore. And right. it's so fun when that happens because you realize, oh, I am the creator of my reality. I changed and my outer world matched. Yes. And so, you know, if you're stuck in a cycle of blame and feeling like a victim and you're resenting people, you're blaming people, you're feeling like it's everyone's fault for my reality. Yeah. It's a choice to decide I choose to become a powerful being who, yeah. who masterfully transforms myself so that I I can get a different result. Yes. Nothing ever on the outside is good to your inner being. Wherever you go, there you are. People try to escape their reality thinking something in the outer world will fix the problem. Yeah. And it just pops up again in a new place because yes. it's you. You're the center of your reality. So, and I, I, I empathize with people in this because I used to feel really victim minded. You know, I, I felt like everything was against me. Yeah. And I used to just blame other people and feel like, why is the world against me? And then when I realized like, oh, I'm the problem and I started to change, I don't feel that way anymore. I feel I went from powerless to powerful. And yes. what I love about the law of attraction and learning universal principles is that now you feel like you have the rules to win at the game of life instead of feeling like you're a victim to your circumstances. And so mm -hmm. it's it's the most empowering thing every single person here can do is decide and commit to becoming a master of yourself. And then yes. everything in your world will change. Your relationships will get better, your work life, your business, your money, your health, everything. Your outer world matches your inner world state of being. And so as long as you keep nurturing yourself holistically, everything yeah. gets better on the outside. I love it. And that's so true. Because I even noticed when I started changing myself, my outside world, completely changed the people I was bringing into my life new people were just popping in out of nowhere and you know other people were kind of becoming distant and it was just like my mm -hmm. whole world was changing as I was changing and it, it is so true very very true now yeah. you wrote a book now tell me about the book you wrote yeah yeah so it's called I'm a money magnet let's see if you can see it there you go. <laughs> I'm a money magnet. It's the top 30 money making affer mantras to manifest more. And it's interesting because it sounds you're like, oh, it's an affer it's an affirmation book. It's so much deeper than that. So in the beginning, I break down law of attraction and manifestation. And then I give you my formula to start to reprogram yourself. And then it's 30 days. So I give 30 very specific affer mantras. And the way that I chose those is that I gathered together what I kept seeing as the biggest problems for people over and over again, who I was working with. And so yeah. I focused those affirm mantras on ways to program yourself. So it gives like a little lesson and then an affirm mantra and journaling prompts. So it's very matched with my, so I have a law of attraction for business school. So if people want to check it out, free trial, they just go to law of attraction for business dot school. Same philosophy here where I, after I wrote the book, I had people saying, where, oh my God, I feel lost without your journaling prompts every day. So they went through the 30 days and they're like, what do I do now without them? So my law of attraction for business school every day, I give a lesson. So MP3 version because I love podcasting. So yeah. um, a lesson mixed with a meditation, a journaling prompt and an Afro mantra. So it's training you and programming you in that repetitive way. And you have me there for you each and every day. And then I do weekly live coaching. So the law of attraction for business school is like, 
packed with value and a really cool community of people. I'd say, you know, for people who like what they heard today, definitely listen to my podcast, Law of Attraction for Business. Um, it's a top 2% podcast and just really, really, let's say <laughs> a wide variety of things because, you know, I'm 350 episodes in or 354 at this point. And like, I, I love to share through my experiences, what I'm learning with other people. And like, I, I, for me, I think my gift that I bring to the world is inspiration. I, I help people feel inspired to change and right. then I give them tools to change. And so I'm not, you know, I think sometimes when people hear law of attraction, the, you know, there can be a very woo woo type of law of attraction. There can be very practical. I'm, I'm much more on, the, I'm like a blend of spiritual and practical. I, yeah. I, you know, I do meditation and I think that every single person, if they journaled and meditated every day, their life would be completely different. And that's why I have that included in my programs and in my book. Um, and I, I, my quest for people is really to, you know, like I always said this when I started, I was like, uh, you know, do whatever it takes to get inspired, to be the most empowered version of yourself so that you can lead a fulfilling life. And whatever that means to you, that's going to look different for everybody, what that fulfillment is, but you can't get that fulfillment until you get inspired to empower yourself and empowering yeah. yourself looks like having these tools to decide what you want and know how to get there and be able to get those results. And that's really what manifestation is. And so, you know, I love to, I love working with people in these ways. It's really fun for me to help people master yeah. themselves and love themselves more and, and play with manifestation. And all of a sudden you go, what? Like, I just did that. How cool is that you know I can see that yeah. I'm a powerful being and then I'm creating my reality and it's really fun and and you know of course I apply business to it because to me I love the freedom of being a business owner and I you know I don't like to be told what to do by other people <laughs> and yeah. so I was like well I gotta have my own business because I, I I'm not good at having other people tell me what to do and I like yeah. the freedom and the expansion on top of that, I really see it as a spiritual growth path because it brings up every shadow part of yourself, you know, all your fears and doubts and uncertainties and like that imposter syndrome and building mm -hmm. a business just brings everything up for you to then work through so that you can keep growing. So I oh. love, I love business for that reason. That's amazing. Now tell me if you had, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you had to emphasize it into, uh, you know, a few important pointers, what would be some of the things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners today from what the conversation we had today? You know, I would say the first step for everybody is make a choice that you want to be better, that you want more, that you deserve more, that you're ready for more. Like once you make that choice, the solutions will appear. It's yeah. all about you deciding that you, you are not going to tolerate settling anymore. You're not going to tolerate a life that feels like you want more. Almost yeah. everybody feels like so many people get stuck in that feeling of like, I want more, but they feel stuck. Decide that you're not willing to take the settling anymore. Decide yeah. to play bigger and then take start taking action. So just ask yourself, what would a person do who's ready to grow? Do they read books? Do they go to workshops? Do they spend time with wealth consciousness people? You know, if you want to be financially free, you better start hanging out with people who are financially free. If you want yeah. to be financially free, you got to be wealthy inside. So yeah. take actions in the direction. And I promise the opportunities will come. This is universal laws. This is the way the universe works. So my manifestation formula just gives you three simple strategies. So just decide today that you are going to train the universe to treat you with abundance and wealth and happiness and joy and inspiration. And then you go, okay, what does a person who wants that do and start doing those things and watch tons of doors of opportunity open for you and everything in your life change. You know, for me, it's like, I went from food stamps to six figures and now I'm happily married. My income just keeps increasing. My life gets better and better and better and better on that upward spiral growth curve. And I'm like, Hey, Every single person can have this. It, it, I'm not special or unique. This is for everybody. I love it. I love it. Now tell everybody the services that you provide so they know. Yes. So everything, if they go to lawofattractionforbusiness.com, I've got a podcast. You'll see my book. You can get free chapters of the book to test it out. And then the school, I'd say 
the best way to hang out with me is in the school. It's very low cost free trial. And it's, I mean, it's packed with insane value. So you get those daily lessons and then also get to hang out with me and the community once a week for live coaching. So, you know, people come and we have incredible conversations. there, really big transformations. I've got a course vault with a ton of courses. It's like, you know, if you ever wanted to learn about the law of attraction, hang out with cool people, grow your business, get coaching, get day, get lessons that are helping you grow. It is your place to be. So law of attraction for business dot school. I love it. I love it. Oh my God. This is amazing. You know, you have been an amazing guest today. I love talking to you about this. I hope you'll be on the show again so we could talk some more about this. You know, I, I love the fact that you wrote the book. I love the fact that it's like a 30 day challenge. That is so cool. I love your, your outlook on, on how to look at life and how, you know, how to really get yourself on a totally different, you know, way of thinking. And, and that way of thinking will bring you to elevate you to higher levels that you, you know, that you know that you're, you know, once you believe in the law of attraction, and you call it out to the universe and you really focused on a positive mindset, you could really go to lengths that you didn't even realize you can go to. And you just keep putting it out there. I want this. I want this. I want this. You know, I, you know, and you keep going and going and going and going and you will become a powerhouse. You know, there's no doubt in my mind, you know, but I love that you bring meditation in because I'm a big fan of meditation. I feel like it really clears your mind, clears your, your thoughts and gives you clarity throughout the day. It really puts you in, in a state of calmness where you're able to handle things and you really have a, a good mindset. And then, you know, and just by, you know, the 30 day challenge in, you know, in your book, I love that you're really, you're, you're teaching someone really how to repetitiously improve their life. You know, if they continue what you taught them in that 30 day challenge and they just keep repeating it, you know, they could actually really go to all lengths, you know, and I love that you have, you know, a, a, a class with a free trial that people could actually, you know, get things and affirmations and they can get ideas and you could teach them something each day and they can just learn and grow with you and then, you know, talk to you on the weekend. So that's amazing. I think you're doing an amazing job and thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing all this great information. You were having a, a wealth of information today and you've been a, a, a big inspiration to myself and I'm sure to many others who are listening to this show today. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I need you to follow me around and just say all that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that you're was awesome. so welcome. Yeah, <laughs> great experience. And I hope I'll talk to you again. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Stacey. You have a great day.